Radiant Church presents Radiant Stories, a collection of stories that showcase God's faithfulness to take our hopeless situations and craft them into beautiful testimonies of His power, provision, and love. We are here today with Kendra Zondervan. We are so excited to have her on. She is the wonderful other half of John Zondervan, who is the Richland campus pastor here at Radiant Ooh. Church. <laughs> she also is on staff, and she plays a huge role in our day-to-day here at the campus. So we are really excited to have her, and she's got a really powerful message. I've heard her testimony before, and the growing up portion of it is really intense, and then encountering the Lord as well. And Pastor John, you know, works, yeah. he's woven into that as well. But today I think she's going to talk about primarily the love of the Father and how it's affected our life. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And this is a really cool opportunity because I don't typically get to talk about my story and I love interviews so much. (laughs) And so it's just something that um, John has the ability to be out front and I love that about him. Mm -hmm. So this is a cool moment for me. And so I actually grew up with a single mom And um, I've never met my birth father. He was not in my life at all uh, because of just a lot of circumstances revolving around abuse. And he actually was in prison and it just, um, he just was never in my life. My mom kind of escaped from him really more than anything. So she grew up, uh, you know, with a, a mom and a dad. They came from the Netherlands, they actually migrated to this country. And so growing up, I kind of was off and on. I would stay with them. They were, you know, really a place of safety for me. It was really a, a God thing growing up because my mom just entered into another relationship that was, you know, basically very abusive when I was Mm -hmm. about three years old. So she, you know, moved in with this guy who later became my stepdad. And it was off and on, we'd be there, we'd move out, we'd be there, we'd move out. So it was just, uh, I grew up very early, I guess. Mm -hmm. I had to, you know, depend on myself. I, you know, probably started, you know, doing things that you wouldn't even do until your college years, basically before I was like 12 years Mm -hmm. old. So just had an interesting kind of life, but you don't understand that you're really in dysfunction until you grow up and you grow out of that dysfunction. And then you realize, wow, okay, I would never want that for my kids. So that was kind of my history. I met John and we met in a restaurant. Neither of us were, were saved. I really hadn't had any experience even going to church at all. I would, you know, occasionally go with my grandpa to this community church that was in our town. And I just remember going and being like, oh, I kind of like the music here. I had this kind of acknowledgement of God. And I always just remember thinking even, oh, well, I'm a pretty good person. I mean, really, that was what I thought. Mm-hmm. And that was, it was really never went beyond that. I never felt conviction of sin. I, there was an emptiness and there was definitely a brokenness um, and just so much shame that I carried. And I just had no understanding or idea how I could ever get rid of that. I mean, as a very young child crying and thinking a lot, like, why am I alive? Why am I here? Because I did have a brother that um, was born before me with my real dad. My mom lost him like in the hospital. He was born with some birth defects. And I just, I remember crying myself to sleep like, God, why am I the one that's alive? And just never really understanding that. So Mm kind of went through, you know, my life being very independent. I moved out when I was 16. I would just live with friends because it was just so chaotic within that environment, just constant just screaming, fighting, yelling, police. It just was never ending. So I learned how to be on my own. And John and I actually came to Radiant when it was not Radiant for a birthday party and literally went to service and encountered the presence of God and for the very first time. And he came forward and I, you know, had this fear for whatever reason. I knew that 
God was real. I knew Jesus forgave my sins. I believed, but I didn't go forward then. But from that moment on, it was the, you know, changed my life. And yeah. John and I uh, were able to really walk through that, those steps of maturing as Christians together because I had kind of lost my friend relationships that I had prior to that. I mean, my life was literally turned upside down mm -hmm. in a great way. So super thankful that we had each other during that time. And so it was kind of like really early on, I think I was just so liberated from like the sin and the shame that I carried that I really pressed in you know, in the sense of being made new in Christ and the life that like he gave me for paying for my sin. Um, but it was just very natural and easy for me not to go deeper with the father because all my life I had lived not really understanding what that relationship mm. means. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had no context for it. So it was just very easy for me to, you know, pray to Jesus and to Father God, but it was very like methodical, if you will. It was, it just, there wasn't a relationship mm -hmm. context. And so I just remember even like the image I had of the Father was distant. He was just distant to me. And when I prayed, I always pictured Jesus as the mediator, like literally the line in the telephone. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I can get close to the father through this cord, but um, it was just never a closeness that I felt like, I don't know, he wanted to have with me because mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand. And I believed that because of the blood of Jesus, I had access to the father. I mean, the word of God talks about us being grafted in as children of God and we're co-heirs with Jesus. But instead of something that kind of broke down barriers, it became an invisible wall almost for me. And then there was an awakening that happened uh, when I went on this heart quest. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It was just an intense, like um, one week time where you went through just a lot of your your past, um, a lot of things that a lot of times you don't even understand have kind of shaped and formed your ideas about yourself, your identity about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it was just very, very in depth. So I spent that week and, um, you know, the Lord just did incredible things, spoke to me in personal ways that I hadn't experienced before. And I just remember at the end, we were at this dinner and we were supposed to kind of ask God a question about like what he wanted to ultimately do for like in the future, kind of mm -hmm. what, what was beyond this, like we were going home and I clearly in a way that probably apart from certain dreams, maybe that I've had, it was almost as if I heard the audible voice of God, but it was so strong in my spirit. And he just said, Kendra, you know, Jesus, but you don't know me. And, um, so it was just like this awakening moment where I yeah. realized I don't really understand the love of the Father, and I want to. I really want to. And so I just think that was the time when the journey really began mm -hmm. for me to sink into the depth of his love. And I think he wants that for all of us. It's not about being just saved by grace. And it's incredible what Jesus has done for us and what we can, you know, have because of what he, he did. But it's ultimately we were created to have relationship with the father. And it was just for whatever reason, that was the moment when that became something that I was not going to let go of. I was going to be on a mission in order to encounter mm -hmm. that more and more. So I just love Radiant so much because it's, you know, just, it's not going through the motions. It's not just, you know, hearing, you know, a few messages and you're, you know, just kind of living life. It's always a challenge to go deeper, to grow in ways that I, I never could have imagined, you know, in the years that I've been here. So I just am so thankful for obviously Pastor Lee and Jane and their leadership and sacrifice and just the way that Pastor Lee does not compromise when 
when it comes to the presence and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And just, I, it, it's changed me. It's changed my life. No, I feel like that is such a profound realization that you obviously didn't have on your own. It was, it was an encounter moment. What are the things that you have done? Like what has changed practically in your, in your prayer life and, and even in your relationship with the Lord and the, the friend Jesus, the brother Jesus yeah. and the father God from that point on when you really heard his voice? What changed practically day to day? How did you start seeking that relationship? I honestly think that there was something that came alive in me as really embracing and believing that I was a daughter of Mm -hmm. God. I think that that helped me to actually communicate and want to like really enter into intimacy, like with the father, I talked to him differently. You know what I mean? It was more like it wasn't a ritualistic type thing where it was, I've got to, you know, come pray to, you know, to Jesus to be like this mediator for me to actually get close to the father. It just literally, those walls were just broken down. Mm -hmm. And it was almost as if I really felt like I was like able to sit on his lap, like be fully embraced, if that makes any sense. So it just changed the way that I like had conversations with him. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, just really turned into, I talked to the father like all the time, like I would somebody who's standing right here next to me. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to, you know, again, I get you carve out time. You have like a set aside time to read the word of God, but it just became a presence that I knew was always there with me. And I think that definitely was something that changed and surely it's changed over time. But I, I think that, um, that was the difference as a new Christian. And as a new believer, it was almost like I had these kind of traditions. I don't even know where they came from, but this idea that, okay, I've got to, you know, do my devotions every morning or every night. And that was the time that I really had to spend with the Lord and to talk to him. And when he would hear me and it just slowly changed to, I know he's always with me. I'm always talking to him. I'm always getting, you know, new revelation about how he feels about me, about my identity, about, you know, things that he's putting on my heart to, to do. And so it was, that just became more of a reality. And I think ultimately what it did was it allowed me to understand how I like how he speaks to me because I do think that the Lord speaks to us in different ways. Like some people will see an image and they will see a picture or they will just get this, a scripture will literally just jump off the page and it will, you know, mean something to them that they could have never, you know, had a like pastor or someone explain it's the Holy Spirit. So just really learning how to understand his voice and how he speaks to me and when he's speaking. And that has, that's changed my life really even over the past, like I would say less than five years, Mm -hmm. that's become very strong because I, I had always been like a I don't know, dreamer, if you will. Like, I think I dream every single night. And I Mm -hmm. remember, no, they don't always make sense. But the Lord has kind of escalated, I think, the way that he speaks to me. And it happens a lot in dreams. And then I've developed like this this thing where I just, I really want to understand. I'm definitely like very analytical. Mm -hmm. I want to know and I want to research and I want to understand. So some of the ways that he has really downloaded just his love in a profound, like supernatural, miraculous way is through dreams and him helping me not interpret other people's dreams, Mm -hmm. but help me interpret my own dreams. I I can just share like, uh, this was probably about eight or nine months ago. I was like at a conference. I, I was with a coworker at the conference. I'm, you know, sleeping in the night and I have this just horrible, horrible, horrible dream. And I have a son, Eric, who is six. And so in the dream, it was like some 
I don't know what was going to happen, but it horribly terrible, like apocalyptic type thing was going to happen. Like Eric was going to suffer and he was going to, like something was coming after him. And I don't know, maybe I've watched too many Walking <laughs> Deads or something. I have no idea. But John and I had to give him poison in this dream. Oh. And my heart is, I mean, in total, total anguish. I can't imagine, but I know I have to do it. So I'm in the dream and I'm just like, I have to do this. And it was, I can't even verbally tell you like how real it felt in that moment mm -hmm. and how it was beyond anything I could ever imagine that I would ever do but I had to do it. So I'm giving it to him and I'm just holding him and I am just broken. I'm broken and I'm feeling him fade away. And I wake up and I'm sobbing when I wake up from the dream. And I'm just, I, it again, just felt so real. And I just knew in that dream, I can't go on. How can I do this? I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to go on. And I woke up and I was just, instead of kind of being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I'd never do that. I, I can't believe I would dream that. Mm -hmm. I, in that moment, just asked the Lord, I asked the Father, I was like, why would I dream this? Lord, I could never do that. How could I do that? How could I even dream about doing that? Why would I even have this dream? And I immediately, it was the tangible presence of the Father in a physical way mm -hmm. came on me and he said, I did that. And it literally was something that was a revelation to me about the depth of his love. He gave and sacrificed his son that he loved so much more than I could ever love my own son that it just gave me like this revelation of, oh my God, you love me. I mean, so much. I can't even, I can't even comprehend the heartbreak and the brokenness that the father had to go through to literally put the sins of the world on the son that he loved, turn his back. And, and again, Jesus chose, he, he chose to make that sacrifice for us, but the father had to have just the, the heartbreak that that is. Yeah. I can't even imagine it. And I, I just, it was something that I, I don't know. It changed. It changed me. It changed my view um, in an even more profound way about the love of the Father, and it was like this horrible, horrible nightmare became a like just a catalyst for the Father to actually even pour out more of His love mm -hmm. on me. And so I, it's just been things like that time and time again that He has done and revealed to me in just random crazy ways. So you've had revelations as kind of an individual. Yeah. You've had revelations because of being a parent. What do you feel like he has revealed to you through the years since, you know, being saved and encountering him in that way about being a daughter, like an earthly daughter? Yeah, I I think it's that he would go through any lengths to uh, honestly just be there for me, to provide for me, to be like with me. Mm -hmm. And it just, I don't know when you don't have a, like an earthly father, it's just so interesting because you, you just don't understand what it would be like to have like this unconditional, like presence, love, reliance on somebody. And my mom, you know, did the best that she could. Uh, again, when you have, when you're parenting out of pain and hurt and mm -hmm. brokenness, it's very difficult for you to, to honestly do the things that I'm sure she right. wanted to do for me. And so being so independent, I think that obviously has changed because I am able to press into like the unconditional love of God. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. Like I know that there's nothing that 
no mistake that I could make, nothing that I could do to separate him from loving me, from encountering me. It, it's just amazing because God continues to like reveal things like that. Even, I mean, honestly, like I was saying, like in the last few years, being able to kind of surrender those things that did give me this false stability and gave me, you know, this idea of, okay, I'm like, I'm okay, like just so thankful for the love of God and how yeah. he speaks to all of us. It's like insane, blows my mind. It is. I, I mean, I, I've been personally impacted by your testimony and I've been personally impacted by the courage that I've seen you display in sharing what the Lord has put on your heart because I know you as a person. <laughs> You do not like talking in front of people. I know. <laughs> I feel like there's more of a power, more of a an edge, and the Lord uses it in a very specific, sharp way when he uses people that um, are typically, quote-unquote, behind the scenes, or they prefer to be a little yeah. bit more behind the scenes and not up front or, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah. I, I feel like there's a, there's an edge to it. There's a specific thing that cuts right to people's hearts. And I, I have personally experienced that from you, and it's been absolutely incredible. Just to end, I want to ask you a really simple question, and it doesn't have to be a long answer, but Kendra, before encountering the Lord, how would she define a father? And now how would you define a father? Wow, that's... I have to like literally sit and like yep. really stew on that. It's so hard to even like say because I really had no idea. Mm -hmm. I had no idea if that makes any sense. Like so, it was just distant. Yeah. There was really no concrete like feeling of what that was prior to my relationship with the Lord. And sure, like it's developed because I was able to really kind of get close to John's dad, mm -hmm. who was an incredible father. So just even early on in my Christian walk, it was kind of like, okay, I had these representations of incredible fathers, which gave me a glimpse into the heart of the father. But I mean, now the father to me, I mean, he, he's everything. He unconditionally knows me. He created me. His thoughts are always positioned towards me. He is my lifeline, I guess. That's, that's what I would say. Like I could never do anything that would separate me from how much he loves me. That's what's changed. Like th there's just no conditions. And maybe before it was, there was a distance or because you know, I could only see that in kind of earthly terms. And even probably with some of the things that I went through with my mom, even love seemed conditional. Mm -hmm. And now I know it's not just unconditional. It's literally God. He did not spare anything in order to be close to me, to really know me. And it's not, that's not just me. That's, you know, all of us. Yeah, it's kind of an abstract thing to grasp onto, especially daughters that do not have close relationships yeah. or any relationship at all with their earthly father. Yeah. You do have a father. You can experience that. Especially as a... A, a woman or a girl when you don't have a father I think there's there's definitely differences between you know fatherless sons fatherless mm -hmm. daughters you go through you know different things and I think there was always this like overwhelming need for validation for yeah. me that I just couldn't get I couldn't I, I couldn't attain it. I knew that it was like this hunger, but I didn't understand how to get it. And of course, in, you know, the, I guess, process of trying to get that validation, I went to many other things, whether it was, you know, like the wrong friendships, drugs, alcohol, guys. I mean, just so many different things that yeah. can try to fill or bring this false um, validation that never satisfies. It literally leaves you more and more empty and broken. I love you. Thank you.
Thank you. <laughs> I can't listen to this. <laughs> This has been Radiant Stories. Click subscribe to get a brand new story delivered to you every Monday.